साईश्वराय विद्महे सत्य देवाय धीमहि तन्नसर्व प्रचोदयात् प्रणाम्स अद द डिवाइन लोटस फीट ऑफ आवर बिलवित भगवान हु इज हियर नाउ परमिएटिंग एंड परवेदिंग एवरीथिंग इन द हार्ट ऑफ ईच वन ऑफ यू ऑफ ईच वन ऑफ अस सो आई ऑफर माय प्रणाम्स एंड माय लव टू ईच वन ऑफ यू आल्सो Dear brothers and sisters, why are we here today? Let me start by telling you why I am here today. More than 37 years ago, I heard about Swami. I never seen him. I just heard his name. I heard that he was called an avatar. I was in another spiritual organization, believing in another guru. But then one day I had a dream. my first dream with swami and i want to share with you that dream i was in a room with seven other people and suddenly swami came in and i don't know why i did namaskar i was surprised at myself doing namaskar and then i thought if you are an avatar i have to see to feel something special when you approach me and he came to us and when he came by my side i had the most incredible experience that is very difficult to convey in words but let me try there were waves of energy coming from my feet to my head as as the energy was going up each cell of my body was exploding like you know when you put water to boil and it bubbles and explodes and when each part exploded i felt ananda bliss in that part of my body i felt ananda in my feet in my knee in my arm all over my body cell by cell and then came the second wave and when the second wave came it hit my knee and i lost my equilibrium and i fell to the floor and i was completely dead i was fully aware fully conscious but inside a dead body i felt that this was flesh dead flesh i couldn't move anything you know when you in the night your arm is numb and you cannot move it my whole body was like that completely dead and i saw swami that was ready to live and from the floor i couldn't speak but i thought in my heart and i said to him you are god you are god you are god and he came back to me and bent and hugged me and gave me three kisses in my heart and i woke up and here i am <laughs> and let me tell you maybe you don't remember maybe you are not aware but each one of you all of you and all the side of bodies all over the world have re- have received that kiss in your hearts that awaken us from the slumber of ages this is the divine touch that transformed us when i came to india for the first time swami was on a tour in the south of india and i went to madras where he was supposed to be i waited for him there and one day he was supposed to come and no one knew at what time i was with 50000 people there and suddenly my heart started to beat very intensely i said what is happening to me at that moment some scar came from that day onwards during my whole trip i knew all every day when some was coming out for darshan because my heart started to beat before and i know my heart recognized him before my mind one day he was going to attend a cultural problem in abbotsbury in madras now called chennai and he was seated in front of in front of the stage and was not far from him so while they were preparing for the cultural program i decided to introduce myself to him so i stood up and went to him to present him my visiting card no one stopped me i reached swami and i said swami swami took it look at me and he did like this you are very lucky and yes brothers and sisters i am very lucky and so are you all we are all very lucky we are here because we are very lucky and let let me explain you a little further why we are so lucky we are so lucky because many lives ago swami has called each one of us he has called each one of us and he has chosen us to be his disciples and in doing so he accepted to be our master and in that moment he said i promise you that i will never leave you i will teach you always i will guide you always i will protect you always i will love you always 
That is why all over the world today, thousands and millions of human beings inside the Bautists are celebrating the divine advent. We are, because we are full of joy and gratitude for our master who will be with us, loving and protecting us all the time. If we are aware of that all the time, we will be happy all the time. We will feel joy in our hearts. I had the good fortune to travel to many Latin American countries and many other countries all over the world for 30 years. And then I found people that were not before in the spiritual path, but when they heard about Swami, when they learned about his message, they became a different person. They changed their set of values. They started to do service to their fellow beings in need. This is what Swami is doing all over the world. He's changing the mind and hearts of people all over the world making them better persons, better human beings. Bhagavan is the source and force of love that is transforming this world. What is the purpose of the Sai organization? It's very simple, two purposes. The first one is to help each one of its members to realize our own divinity. But there is a second purpose and we must not forget it is that we come together to help as many people as possible to advance in their spiritual awakening. <clears throat> we call the Sai, Sri Satya Sai Seva Organization of India, the Central Trust, the Ashram, the Satya Sai Organi International Organization. These are, these are all names, but actually we are all one. We are all Sai devotees trying to fulfill our duty to be his instruments, to share his message with all humanity. To achieve this, we only need one thing, unity and love. We have to be united. We have to become better instruments in his divine hand. The International Satya Sai Organization has been doing his work, its work, spreading Swami's message and doing service in more than 120 countries all over the world for decades. Every year we produce a beautiful report to showcase our activities. It is not for publicity, it's just to inspire, to motivate. This I have just presented on the 2017 annual report at the Divine Lotus Feet. It is here. You will be able to see it online also in the satyasai.org site. This is the website of the International Sai Organization. I want to share with you also something very special. Last year, when the printer from Chennai, who is seated here, finished the 2016 annual report, he wanted to present it to Swami, so he went to the ashram in Chennai, the Shivan ashram, and put it at his feet there. A few moments later, he took it from there, and he realized that the last page, page of this annual report was full of bibuti. <clears throat> Dear brothers and sisters, I want to tell you something. I was born in Argentina. I have an Argentinian passport. According to my passport, I am an Argentinian. But really, let me tell you, I'm not an Argentinian. I'm a Baratilla. I'm a citizen of Barat because I held in my heart the values of Bharat. And also Swami says that the Bharatiya is a person who has love for God. It doesn't matter where we are from, Colombia, Peru, Mexico, Venezuela, Cuba, Poland, Russia, India, China, Africa, we are all Bharatiyas. We all have love for God. What we need to do today? What is, Swami gave us the answer when he was in the form of Shir Desai. The secret of all spiritual sadhana, he said it in a very simple way. I will share it with you. And he also said it in this incarnation. He said, if you look at me, I look at you. If you think about that, you will realize something very, very special. He promised to us, if you look at me, I will look at you. What is needed? What is needed is for us to realize that he's there looking at us, right? So he said, 
If you just think that I am there, I promise to you, I will be there. I will be looking at you. He said the same thing as Satya Sai. He said, why fear when I am here? So brothers and sisters, all that we need to do is to remember his presence all the time. If we do that, all what we will do will feel, will be pure, will be sacred. What else we need to do? Today is Bhagavan's divine birthday. We are full of gratitude because he came for us in this form. When there is a birthday, at least in Latin America, I hope here also, we give a present to the person whose birthday is, right? There is a custom here. So I would like to invite you to give a present to Swami. The present I want you to give to him today is not something material. It's not even to promise more hours of meditation, of seva. It's to do what our brother has just said, our inner transformation. How can we show him our inner transformation? It's very simple. Let's promise today to him, all of you, promise, Swami, from today onwards, I will not criticize another human being again. Not in thought, not in word, not in action. Let's promise him today, this is a very complex gift. Let's promise him that from today onwards, we will never be angry. Because if you are angry, you are not the side devotee. Swami said, our brother read it in the, in the speech just now, that he considers the side devotee the person who is never happy when he's good or sad when he's bad always steady. So if we know that whatever happens to us is sent by him for our benefit, why are we going to get angry? So, Swami, I know that all that is happening in my life has been sent by you. I will never be angry again. And the third thing, let's promise to him, brothers and sisters, please do it. Let's promise to him that from today onwards, he will be smiling all the time. If you don't smile, you haven't understood anything. <laughs> if you know that he's here with us, in our hearts, around us, above us, all the time, so why could we not be smiling all the time? Don't say any more Sairam. Say Sairam smiling, because you recognize the other person as an embodiment of Swami. Swami is disguised in that name and form but he's Swami, so when I see him, I will say, Sairam Swami. Okay? I hope that you will give to Swami this presence. Dear brothers and sisters, let me tell you something very important. You are ready to do that, and the time is now. So, so from today onwards, none of you will criticize anymore, none of you will be angry anymore, and all of you will be smiling all the time. I want to conclude this talk sharing with you two experiences that I have. In one of them, you know, Swami taught us how to ask God. And this is the secret I want to share with you. He said, to ask God, you have to do it with intensity, as every, everything else in the spiritual life. Till we find two, two moments. Either we are exhausted of asking and we give up, or he's tired of listening and he consists to us what we're asking. One day I was traveling to seven Latin American countries to participate in public meetings, to participate in the selection of office bearers. My first destiny was Bogota, the capital of Colombia. I took a plane from Argentina. I did a stopover in Miami. I arrived at Miami 4 or 5 a.m. in the morning. My plane to Bogota was leaving at 4 p.m. in the afternoon. I decided to wait at the airport. 11, 12 hours. I went to the meditation room, did my meditation. I had breakfast, I read, I went to one store, another store, another store. I sat again, read again. You know, 11 hours or 12 hours are an eternity. At 2 p.m. I decided to go to the check-in to board my plane to Colombia. And I have a bag. At that time, the travel agency issues tickets that were papers, not electronic like today. And the travel agency gave me a purse, a plastic purse, where I put my tickets, 
my passport, my credit cards, my money. So I went to check in and I put my, my, my hand in the bag and the, the plastic bag was not there. I couldn't believe it. I tried again, it was not there. You know, if you lose your ticket, the travel agency might issue a new one, you, know, you can continue your trip. But when you lose your passport, there is no way. You have to ask the embassy to issue a temporary passport and come back to your country. And I had a trip to seven Latin American countries. That same day, I had to attend a public meeting in Bogota, in the University of Bogota, where 2,000 people came. And all the posters were there with my name, and, and also officers were traveling to different cities to, for the selection of office bearers. It was a complete disaster. I couldn't believe it. I started running like crazy to all the places where I had been. I went to lost and found nothing, to one place, to another place. You know, the Miami airport is very big. I was like crazy, saying, this cannot happen. And then I remembered Swam, and I remembered how to ask him. So I decided to go to the most private place to ask him. What is the most private plane, place in an airport? A bathroom. I went to the first bath bathroom I found out of the dozens of, dozens of bathrooms that are there. I went inside the bathroom, and I sat on the, on the toilet, closed the door, and I started asking Swami. Swami, please, Swami, please, Swami, please. Not allowed, because if not, someone would say there's a crazy person then they are called security and take me to the asylum. But in my mind, I was, Swami, please, Swami, please, Swami, please, for 40 or 45 minutes. And there was a moment when I couldn't ask anymore. I always say, if you had brought a gun and say once more, I would say, shoot. I had no more energy. I gave up. I surrendered to his will. I left the bathroom, and as soon as I closed the door, I raised my head, and a lady was two meters away was standing, looking straight, straight to me. And she said, sir, is this yours? And she lifted her arm with my travel purse. And you know, with my mind, with my mad monkey mind, I look inside to see if everything was inside. And of course, everything was inside. When I lift my head, three seconds later, the lady vanished in the thin air. She was nowhere. Swami was here giving darshan, and Swami was at Miami airport giving back my, my passport and my tickets. Swami is everywhere all the time. And my last experience, it's very important for me and I think for all of you. It was on my first trip to India. I came here, well, if I... If I would share all the experiences I have in my first trip, I would be here two hours, and Dr. Narendra Reddy and Randa Kar will not let me speak anymore. But I was in my first trip uh, to Swami. I was not dressing in white. I was dressing with jeans, long hair, and I was longing for an interview. And 20 days went on, and one night I was in the room, and I felt every day, you know, I had the incredible fortune every day, Swami, either signed me a picture or gave me Vibhuti or gave me Padnamaskar. I was overwhelmed by his love. So I went in my room, and I, at that time, I was vice president of the other spiritual organization. And I wrote in a piece of paper my resignation to that organization, because I said, I have found God, and I will surrender to him and give my life to him. So here is my resignation to that organization. I went next morning to Darshan, and Swami came out from the veranda, and instead of his usual round, he came straight to me. And he stood in front of me and he said, yes. The last night, I said yes to him. The mo in the morning, he said yes to me. He said, this afternoon, I will call you for an interview. Well, imagine, when the darshan was over, I wanted to go to the interview room in to sit in front to wait for the afternoon. But the sevas told me, and he said, no, no, it's not like that. You have to come back to Darshan, and Swami, if he wants, he will call you. And I thought that this, that Seva didn't like my face. He was spoiling my opportunity to have my first uh, interview. But what could I do? So I came in the afternoon, I got a third row that at that time was to be far, far away. And I was thinking, Swami will not remember. Even if he remembers, he will not find me. I was really sad. When Swami came out for Darshan from the veranda, he didn't look for me. He looked straight at me. And from the veranda, he shouted, you. And I stood up and went to him and said, yes, Swami. He said the most beautiful word.
go. And in the interview room, he was talking to us, and suddenly he looked at me and he said, all what was going in my mind since the morning, that I thought he was not going to remember, that I thought he was not going to find me. He said everything. And then he approached me and said something in my ear, almost whispered something that I will never forget. And please, don't you ever forget it. He said, I will never disappoint my devotees. <laughs> Dear brothers and sisters, let's not disappoint him because he will never disappoint us. Let's express with all our heart, and I would like to say on behalf of all of you, and on behalf of all the millions of devotees that are now in their centers celebrating this advent, thank you, Swami. Thank you, Swami. Thank you, Swami. Jai Sai Ram.